I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now waiting, better believe in your mind Cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything Hey everybody, this is Praxis. Watching events unfold in Eastern Europe over the past couple weeks has had kind of a roller coaster ride feel to it. There have been positive developments, negative developments, things have been going this way and that way, and it's got a lot of people feeling like they're kind of getting jerked around. Is this World War III thing going to happen? Is it not going to happen? That would be great. And if it is going to happen, how can we know when it will happen and how can we be sure of any of this stuff? That's what I want to talk about in this video. Is this global conflict going to happen? When will it happen? And again, how can we be sure about any of this? Uh, before we get into that topic, though, I, I oftentimes when I'm talking about something that is interesting and important but not that visually interesting here on my channel, I will do a visual tour of the homestead and the forest that surrounds it. Specifically today, it's finally really cold. It was like 70 degrees last week. I was wearing shorts and a t-shirt outside and today I'm not. And what we're going to be doing is heading down to a stream. Streams are really beautiful uh, in the winter time. If you've ever done winter hiking, you'll know that uh, oftentimes streams, especially if they're uh, being fed by springs, uh, they're this cool interaction between warm water and the, and the cool air, and it creates really beautiful uh, uh, you know, ice sculptures and things like that around us. So we're going to head down there. We're going to check that out, uh, look at some of the beauty of nature while we kind of discuss some of the horrors of humanity. So let's jump right into it. Is this global conflict going to happen? The answer is yes. And how can I say that? And how can I say that with such assurance? Um, I, I don't know if you could tell in my voice, I have a great deal of, of assurance that that is going to be the case. Now, how can I be certain of that? Well, the way that you can figure out whether something's going to happen is not uh, to look up at the surface, but to look at the underlying factors that are going on beneath the surface. And you know, what are the drivers of that? And if the drivers of that are something that's gonna go away, then that event may not happen. If the drivers of that are things that are not gonna go away, then that event, you know, with relative certainty is going to happen. What are the, what are the drivers of, you know, this global conflict? Well, uh, the drivers as I see it, and uh, you know, I don't think you have to look too deeply into these things is, you know, global resource scarcity. Uh, you know, Ukraine at the moment is a place with an abundance of natural resources, uh, you know, food production, uh, you know, miner mineral resources, all these types of things. And over the past couple of weeks, uh, you know, while things have been going like a roller coaster over in Eastern Europe, at the same time, uh, it is estimated that the world population of humans has surpassed 8 billion of us. And what has allowed that to happen is something that is not sustainable. Uh, in the past, people needed to uh, live their lives uh, based on the energy output that fell onto the planet every day or like the geothermal uh, kind of properties of the earth itself. We broke free of that when we started tapping the energy that is in fossil fuels. We were able to use ancient sunlight from millennia ago and we were able to use that energy today. It was saved up for us kind of like if you're like a trust fund kid, you know, your, your ancestors had saved up all this money for you and you finally you tap into it, you don't have to live off the paycheck that you make, you know, day to day. You suddenly have this huge wealth of resources and these resources eventually run out. I know there's lots of people here on YouTube that'll just say, oh, it's just a big conspiracy. Fossil fuels never run out. The industry is just creating that as a uh, cover to, to, you know, to raise prices, you know, create the false sense of scarcity. I, I'm not really going to directly uh, <laughs> you know, try to refute that other than to say, if you walk into a forest and you start cutting down trees, it might be a really big forest and trees will grow back very, very slowly over time. But uh, trees grow back a heck of a lot faster than fossil fuels get regenerated and humans don't seem to have any trouble at all clearing forests and those forests never coming back. The idea that fossil fuels are a renewable resource is uh, true in the geological sense, but not true in the sense of a human lifetime. These things uh, exist in certain quantities in the, on the ground, in the planet, in, under the ground, and once we pull them up, they don't continue to, to exist under there. It's kind of like if you're walking over a parking lot and you pick up a quarter, surprise, surprise, that quarter is not on the ground anymore. So we're using these things and because of them, we've been able to explode the population of the planet. The planet has a certain load carrying capacity and we have exceeded that by using 
this ancient windfall that we have found under the ground uh, to you know, explode our populations well beyond what the planet can carry. Uh, smart people know that and smart people understand that uh, there's going to be a scrambling for those resources. Ukraine has lots of natural resources. It has got wonderful farmland, lots of mineral resources. And you know, it's not surprising that people are squabbling over that area, but as things move forward and the resources get scarcer and scarcer and scarcer, these types of conflicts are not going to get less common. They're gonna get more and more and more common. And that is just the mathematics of having X number of people and Y number of resources and doing the mathematics and figuring out that they're just, there just isn't enough for everybody. And the way the humans usually solve those problems is not by everybody uh, using less and trying to you know, be compassionate and sharing with each other and trying to do the best that they can in a communal sense. Uh, you look through history and the way that people handle that is war and fighting. And that's, that's just the reality of it. I don't like it. Uh, you know, I wish that we could come up with other ways of solving our problems, but that's just the reality. That's how we solve our problems is we fight and we kill each other. So if we are going to continue to have this number of people on the planet and we are going to continue to rely on resources that are dwindling smaller and smaller and smaller in order to support that population, is it inevitable that there is going to be conflict in the future with people fighting over those resources? I think yes, probably, uh, unless you know humans today are significantly different than humans that have ever existed on the planet before. I don't find any evidence to see that that is true. Uh, but uh, you know, if we are the humans that we have always been, that's the way we're going to solve the problem: is by, with war and killing. And uh, you know, when is this all going to happen? That's the question mark. Uh, th that's really the question mark: is uh, you know, how long can people continue to kick the can down the road? I don't have the answer to that. But I do know that the, the response to this should be to prepare for it happening at any time. It could happen tomorrow. It could be, you know, maybe it's another decade or more before it happens. Uh, and that would be a good thing because it would give more of us more time to prepare. But our response to it is the only thing that we have any discretion over. You know, whether this thing happens, it is beyond the scope of any one of us individual, you know, people on the world. Uh, the only thing that we have control over is how we, re we react to it, and the way that we react to it is to pre prepare for it. I'm sorry, I'm starting to uh, shiver a little bit because it is pretty cold out today. Um, and that is what I want to leave you with in this video. Whether this thing happens tomorrow or whether this thing happens in 10 years from now, and I think that it's probably closer to tomorrow than 10 years to no from now. I'm not saying it's going to be like in two weeks, but uh, you know, I. Yeah, I guess we'll see if we have 10 years before things really get uh, quite hot. I, I, I think that we're looking at months, if not maybe just a couple of years before things really get intense for people. But that's critical time that you can use right now. And what do you do with that time? Well, what you want to do is if your the society and the systems around you start to crumble, you want to be in a position where you're not relying on those things. And uh, putting yourself in that position, uh, you know, it creates a lot of positives, you know, in your here and now. If you are not reliant on the electrical grid, uh, you know, if there's a winter snowstorm and, the, uh, you know, a, a branch knocks down the power lines, then it's not an inconvenience for you. If, uh, you know, the, over the past couple of years, I personally like grapefruit juice. And over the past couple of years at my grocery store, uh, it has been really hard to find. In fact, over the, the past 10 months, there's been no grapefruit juice at the grocery store that I shop at. And I know that it's been 10 months because whenever I buy anything, including grapefruit juice, I put the date of when I purchased it and I put it into the pantry. And I was getting pretty low in the pantry, but I never ran out. I never had to stop indulging my love of grapefruit juice because I didn't rely on it always being in the store. When it was available, I bought plenty of it. And I got down to two containers and then it started being available at the grocery store again. So these types of prep things uh, that we do, they are beneficial if there was ever like a, and by if, I guess, suppose in the context of this video, I'm talking about when, when there will be a time when our society really starts to uh, uh, break in its ability to, uh, to supply us with the things that we have been accustomed to it supplying uh, uh, us with. But in the meantime, it provides us all sorts of benefits, uh, you know, where we don't have to experience a lot of the bumps in the roads. Preps can be anything. Preps are preparing for any type of you know, issue that you might have in the future. And it can get all the way down to just, if you take a key and you put a key hidden outside so you don't accidentally lock yourself out of the house someday. You lock yourself out of the house. If you don't have a key outside, it's a really big pain in the butt problem. If you do have a key outside, it's 
nothing at all. And that's what preps are all about, is anticipating problems that you may have in the future or will have in the future with certainty and taking action today to make it so that's not as much of a problem. We have time now. I don't know how much time, uh, but the clock is ticking. This conflict is going to happen because the things that are driving it uh, are not going away. The population of the Earth is not suddenly going to you know, flash from 8 billion down to 1 billion. Humans may make it happen, and that's what we're talking about in this video, but that's not just going to spontaneously solve itself, that people, uh, you know, are gonna, our populations are going to just, you know, collapse on their own. Although again, with all the uh, pollution in the environment and, uh, you know, the fertility of human beings uh, plummeting, uh, you know, decade over decade, uh, it's getting smaller and smaller, you know, I guess Mother Earth might have some plans in mind for that, but I don't think we can necessarily depend on that, and we certainly can't depend on the idea that unsustainable resources can be sustained forever into the future. It is definitionally in their name. If something is unsustainable, it can't be sustained. That means it has an end date. What, if, what happens when things run out for people that people are accustomed to, that people need? They fight over them. So get ready today. I don't know exactly how much time we have left, but you have today anyway, so make a count. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every week for new videos. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so through Patreon or PayPal.